regular board meeting of trustees, Village of Brown, uh, Cook County, Illinois, the day of February 27, 2024. At this time, uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Trustee Cap? Trustee Hodges? Here. Trustee Garcia? Present. Trustee Greer? Absent. Trustee Richardson? Here. Trustee Claybrooks? Here. And Mayor, and Mayor Polk. Polk. And Mayor Polk is voting in the affirmative since we only have three trustees of record. So if the clerk will so put that in the record that the mayor is voting with the trustees to affirm uh, the quorum. So three trustees and the mayor is also a quorum. Okay, could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Please read the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So are there any uh, approval or corrections of the minutes of the board meeting that was held on February 13, 2024? Any corrections to be made? Well, here and now, I want to ask for a motion to approve the minutes of February 13, 2024. A motion to approve the minutes of February 13, 13 2024. The most vote by the trustee, uh, trustee Hodges. Do we have a second, please? Second. Second by the trustee Richardson. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Mayor Polk? Yeah, Polk both in the affirmative, yes. Um, before we open the meeting to the public, if there are any public comments, and I said, but I want to try to use that share. Um, I ain't doing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have a, a comment after we open the meeting to the public, then you can go ahead and address that. If not, you will close the meeting to the public and revoke the mayor session. So at this time, I will ask for a motion to open the meeting to the public for public comments. Make a motion to open the meeting to the public. So the motion is approved by Trustee Clay Brooks. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Trustee Richardson. Will the clerk take the vote? Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Clay Brooks? Yes. Mayor Polk? Yes. Open session for the other public comments. Um, yes. Maria Rosales, um, I just wanted to know if you are aware of uh, Tiffany Henyard's accusations and how does this affect Burnham since she is our township supervisor? When you say accusation, she's being investigated by the FBI. Well, um, I don't know specifically anything about that no more than I read, uh, I mean, what I read just like everyone else. So, um, so it's something that's outside of our perimeter and whatever they go on or whatever they, they find, if they find anything that is, that we just cross that bridge when we get to it. But nothing you notice right now that would affect us immediately? Um, I do not in, I do not anticipate that. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the taxes per se. It just means the general services from the township and, and Dalton, of course, is independently of us. So, okay. Are there any other public comments? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to close the meeting to the public. I'll make a motion to close the meeting to the public. There's a motion on the floor by Trustee Richardson to close the meeting for the public that we have a second. I second. Second by Trustee Hodges with a plug take the roll. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrooks? Yes. Mayor Polk? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Media is now closed to the public. Well, in the mayor's report, um, the flood we had back in uh, September and certainly was unfortunate and it was an act of God, so there was nothing we could do about it. So, um, range for a day and a half or whatever the case was so but anyway so we didn't we invited FEMA to come to Burnham so we set it up and our staff people organized and did extra work to get out of the community set up you know compatible to what they wanted so 228 people uh, filed claims and 208 of those claims were granted so if a total of 585,000 $539. Like five hundred and $585,539 was granted to Burnham residents 
I mean, as a result of the flood. Right. So only 20, only 20 claims that, uh, that was not awarded out of 200, out of 228. So. And also we have some additional property pins that we uh, would probably be pursuing for economic development purposes as we've done with some of the pins on Torrance Avenue and what I have new uh, store and, uh, and now we have a piece of shop down there so we want to continue to do that and to boost the economic development for Burnham so we can bring some additional sales taxes in, the property taxes in and the report came in to say that 22 percent of the people of this municipality are not keeping up with the property taxes so and you're hoping that that will uh, improve as time goes. Um, at this time, we will have a presentation um, by uh, the group. And Scott, you can take the floor. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you for having us here at your meeting this evening. Uh, my name is Scott Breha. I'm the study manager for the I-94 Dalton Road Interchange Pell Study. Uh, I'm joined by my colleagues, Yvonne Wasu Safo, um, Christine Kutcher, Kut, yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Laura Van Wert, and Tracy Bailey. Can you see if you turn the light on or no? Uh, yeah, I, I should be okay. Also, <laughs> You can turn it back, but it's not a good job for me. Am I again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so kicking off our study. Okay, so tonight we're going to touch upon a few things. Uh, the PEL process. PEL is short for planning and environmental linkages. Uh, we'll look at an overview of what the study will include, as well as the timeline for the study completion. Uh, we'll outline our plan for engaging key stakeholders uh, in the public, and we'll also answer your questions. Why can't I advance it? <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so what are we studying? Okay, this, the, the City of Calumet City has initiated a planning and environmental linkages study, uh, PAL, abbreviated, abbreviated PAL, for the interchange of Dalton, Dalton Road and I-94. So the interchange currently provides partial access to and from the north, and our PAL study is going to address the need for providing full access uh, at this interchange, and what solutions would be best. Uh, we're gonna give consideration to neighbors, businesses, travelers, the environment, and the overall community. Okay, so what is a PEL study? Uh, a PEL study is a collaborative and integrated approach that considers how a transportation improvement project may benefit or impact the environment, community, and economy within a study area. A PEL study blends early planning studies with aspects of the environmental review process and provides opportunities for federal review so the planning study can be brought into NEPA. And NEPA is short for the National Environmental Policy Act. So projects with a, with a federal link, such as federal funding, require environmental review under NEPA. NEPA is a federal law uh, that follows a formal environmental review process to ensure a project remains in compliance with various federal, state, and local laws and regulations. So the PELS study allows for early planning level discussions with the community, stakeholders, as well as resource and regulatory, regulatory agencies. So through these discussions, this will help to define the project location, develop a purpose and need for the project, and develop reasonable alternatives for subsequent analysis. And these are all essential elements of the NEPA decision-making process. So PEL is a pre-NEPA study. So NEPA requires federal agencies to consider the impacts that the project may have on the environment and the related social and economic effects. So how do PEL and NEPA work together? So once the PEL study concludes, alternatives can be carried forward into the NEPA environmental review process and then into preliminary engineering design. So the benefits of a PEL study. 
So transportation projects can benefit, benefit from doing planning studies before NEPA to focus on specific project factors such as community engagement, traffic and safety, and natural or community assessments. The Pell process accelerates the project delivery process in various ways. It connects the initial planning and environmental impact reviews. It allows for early community engagement and input. It reduces the need for rework and revisiting past decisions. And it also builds relationships with resource agencies and stakeholders, such as the City of Calumet City, the Illinois Department of Transportation, other local resource agencies, and the Federal Highway Administration. In addition to federal procedures, this project will also allow IDOT, or will follow IDOT procedures, setting a path forward to expedite planning. And depending upon available funding, the study may advance to phase one uh, engineering, environmental and preliminary engineering. After that would be phase two, which is final engineering and, and right away acquisition. And phase three is construction. So as of right now, the only thing that is currently funded is the Pell study. These are subsequent phases that are currently unfunded, but if funding does become available, we could advance into those. So the Pell study, is that phase one? Or that is one? actually pre-phase one. Pre -phase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a study overview and time frame. Um, we started the project uh, last fall. We had some initial data collection efforts. Uh, we're gonna to continue to collect data through the summer of 24. Uh, we are having a public and stakeholder engagement, our first round where we will uh, have an existing conditions and a needs survey that's scheduled coming up here in the spring of 24. Uh, our second round of public engagement um, is going to be the purpose and needs statement, uh, summer of 24. We will, once that's developed, we will coordinate the purpose and needs statement with FHW and IDOT also later in the summer of 24. Uh, our third round of public engagements will be alternatives identification, which will take us into the fall of 24. And then the fourth round uh, will be alternative screening, and we will define alternatives to be carried forward. Some of the alternatives will likely be dismissed, and we will define the ones to be carried forward and that should occur in the winter, by the winter of 24. We will coordinate those alternatives again with FHWA and IDOT, late 24, early 25, and we're anticipating the Pell study concluding by the summer of 25. So that's the timeline for our study. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to introduce our public en engagement team. They're gonna talk about the strategy to communicate and solicit feedback uh, from the community. So Laura. Thanks, Scott. Hi, my name is Laura Van Wert. I'm thrilled to be working on this study with our talented engagement team, who you'll see here. Um, I'm going to turn the microphone, microphone over to my colleague, Tracy Bailey, in a few minutes, um, but I did just want to generally talk about um, Pell and a Pell study and the public engagement process. Um, so Pell studies are a collaborative and integrated approach to transportation decision making that considers environmental, community, and economic goals early in the transportation process. I love working on Pell studies as a community engagement um, professional because um, it becomes less of a uh, community en engagement becomes less of an afterthought. It's less of checking the box to make sure that you've done community engagement. And it allows us to go through the studies process together from beginning to end, um, presenting to the, the public with information, and more importantly, listening to your feedback. Um, to me, successful communication in a Pell study will mean that um, all those that are impacted by the interchange will have ample opportunity to tell us what you think about the interchange challenges, the data that we collect, um, and potential solutions for improving quality of life as it pertains to accessing and moving around the interchange. Um, so this is a data-based process that uses information analysis and uh, products developed during uh, the planning and environmental review process. 
so too will we use data to identify and connect with the community. Um, so from those who are in leadership, such as yourselves, and those who are really vocal in the community, you know those folks, uh, you know our neighbors that tell us everything, um, our pastors, um, you know, people who are always in the know. So we want to include those folks, but we also want to make sure that we are um, connecting with people in historically underserved uh, groups. So low income and ni minority populations, young people and old people, old, older adults, <laughs> um, those with barriers to digital communications, job seekers and small business owners, and those who speak English as a second language, to name a few. Um, the goal is to arrive at final alternatives that um, incorporate transportation equity and address the needs of the underserved communities along the proposed study corridor. Um, the engagement team will accomplish this goal first um, through the talented and diverse staff that represents the studies uh, the study's regional community. Um, this will enable us to seriously consider different perspectives and challenges while working um, to identify holes in our strategy early on and address them and mitigate them. Um, second, I'm sorry, I'm speaking. I have to go down in my notes. Um, second, by bringing together key members of the public through in-person and virtual public information meetings, so we'll have two public information meetings. These are formal presentations um, and open houses, um, economic and workforce development workshops, um, and we will have a stakeholder advisory council, and they'll have regular scheduled meetings. Um, third, we'll be uh, accomplishing this goal by publishing key study information through newsletters, the project's website, and on social media platforms, and last, by seeking, collecting, and responding to public comments um, through public legal notices and advertising, certified mailing, and surveys throughout the 18th month study. So I have spoken enough. I would love to bring Tracy up here. Um, so if you could walk us through the details of our community engagement uh, strategy. Oh, you're great. Thanks, Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, um, yeah. see, mm -hmm. Village of Burnham. I appreciate your time today. So I'm going to walk you briefly through the uh, public engagement uh, strategy and an overview of what that is. So my name is Tracy Baby. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be working in the project area during the study period. This uh, strategy that I will be relating to you guys, you guys today is intended to um, to involve the stakeholders who potentially could be impacted by this interchange. So that would include our young and our old, our employed and our employee, those seeking employees or employment. That includes our public uh, entities, our uh, public entities that are champions for organizations in the project area. That also includes our community residents who wish to be um, who's new to public involvement and wish to be more engaged. But last and not least, it includes the travelers that needs to pass through that interchange safely. So our strategy will involve uh, a number of activities. As Laura stated previously, we're going to have regular, regular digital updates via, via the Calumet City website, via social media platforms, and a bi-monthly newsletter that will provide that information to you. We are going to participate in community meetings and events, be present in the community. We want to do surveys, we want to promote comments, we want to invite the community to come to our public uh, information meetings because that's where the collective voice will inform the data. As Laura and Scott stated, this is a data-driven study. So and the more vocal that the community and the project area residents are about what they would like to see happen in their community, um, the more collectively. Uh, one voice, right, it makes a sound, a collective voice makes a roar. So tell your neighbors, your friends, your communities, tell your church members, whomever, that collectively the more data that we can collect, the better informed that the study will be and impactful for the, pro the residents that is involved in the project area. 
We are in the process of um, creating a stakeholder advisory council. The stakeholder advisory council will provide input on the community's uh, concerns, values, and needs, and they'll act as a liaison, so a conduit, between the project team and between the community, which means that information will go a two-way street. They'll bring information to us, we'll give information to them. The objective is the community is to be informed and engage. That's the most important part, that engagement for the community, because again, the data that is collected from the residents will help determine what happens in their community, and that's the best outcome for us all. Um, we'll, as Laura stated, have workshops, economic and development workshops, doing the purpose and need phase of, uh, um, uh, later on, and to say I think that's later, early, later spring, early summer, or sometime around the summertime. Yeah. And then we're going to do two rounds of public meeting, public inform information meetings. There will be maps, we'll bring you information, data that we've collected thus far, and provide the opportunity for the public to comment, to provide feedback, and to uh, ask questions based on what um, the data has we've collected thus far at that time. So the Stakeholder Advisory Council. The Stakeholder Advisory Council will consist of uh, stakeholder groups that are um, relevant to the study and the project area. It will be groups such as uh, public sector groups, youth, or youth, or youth organizations, advocacy groups, seniors, religious groups, um, informal and formal community leaders as well as our public servants and again that is our conduit um, try as we might we will not be able to touch everybody in the project area so we will use our champions and our stakeholder advisory council to ensure that the information is continuously flowing as we uh, complete the study over the next 18 months uh, then sorry I <laughs> thing. Uh, the council will uh, will have conduct regular virtual meetings for the council. Um, I, the stakeholder groups, as I said, public officials, business, not for profits, youth or youth organizations, seniors. There's a large senior population in this area, so we definitely want the input from those individuals, from those community leaders. Moving on to the workshops. The workshops, the economic development workshop. The purpose of the economic development workshop is to provide participants with valuable insights and practical skills to contribute to the economic development in their community. So there'll be two to four hours in duration, um, at least. They're meant to be informative and interactive. We'll bring local, state, county, and regional workforce development organizations to the table. There'll be panel discussions as well as breakout sessions. That is the workforce development that's on the screen. Economic development is what I'm talking about now. Um, we'll, have, we'll provide uh, information about access to funding and resources. This economic development workshops will be for small businesses as well as entrepreneurs um, that are seeking uh, to start a business. Uh, we'll discuss the enterprise zones in the area, and again, we'll have panel discussions from local business owners for the economic development uh, workshop. And then we'll go back to the workforce development workshop, similar to economic development. It'll be two to four hours in duration. It's meant to be informative and interactive. Uh, that's where we'll have our local, local county and state, uh, as well as regional workforce um, agencies present. We'll have breakout sessions to work on resume building, uh, effective job searching, interview skills, professional communications, as well as time management and goal setting. We'll also have local workforce agencies present for the uh, community residents that are seeking employment currently uh, at this time. So um, that will conclude, <laughs> I know I spoke fast, but that will conclude some of the activities that we will be uh, conducting over the next 18 months. We look forward to being here. We're looking forward to working with the community. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Scott for any questions that you guys may have of us. Um, well, I think that, uh, I mean, one of the criticisms I think is going to come from the, the area locally here is that this interchange is connected to the west end of State Street. And a lot of people are really, 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 really complaining about how bad State Street is. And I, and I know this is probably further down the road, but um, do you have an update, anything about that? I talked to Matt about it 
I think he told me 2025 might be when they're gonna have the funding for State Street. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure when the actual funding would be available. Um, but as, as I mentioned before, as far as this uh, project is, the only thing that's currently funded is, is this study. You know, the, those subsequent phases that I talked about. Th this is funded through a federal grant. Um, and I'm saying that's probably what the people are going to get upset at, but they're going to they be looking at when you're funding something that doesn't even exist and we hold someone driving on every day, tearing up a car. And we got a yeah. lot of complaints about that. A lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, so make sure you, we, we, we will. That back in the right place. Yes, we will. We will address that as part of this study. Yes, we will definitely okay. document that that concern that you mentioned. I proceed. So we provided packets of information, um, a handout in the study area map for you. Um, that includes uh, the contact information for Scott, Tracy, myself, and Christine, who is our um, environmental lead on on. The study. So, um, yeah, we we also have our contact information up here um, as we're going through. Uh, you know, just accepting comments. Um, we certainly want to make sure if there are any events that you have out in the community um, that that you think would be appropriate for us to be there. Um, we'd love to hear what they are. Um, okay. well, we intend to be pretty busy this summer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, yes. Yeah. Uh, what company do you work for? I'm with WSP USA Incorporated. We're a consulting engineering firm. Okay, I'm trying to figure out who you are. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, do you have business cards? Um, I'll give you mine. <laughs> okay. Okay. How long are you? Well, are you going to say to the end of the meeting? Uh, we can. It's on the flyer. Yeah, like. Pardon me? It's on the. The contact it information. Have, yeah. It doesn't have. Information I'm looking for it doesn't say who they are. WSP, I don't know who that is. I'm sorry, I'm making sure. Okay, so is that it? I have a question for the workforce study. Are those and this generally going to be on Zoom? The workforce, the workforce study study. The workforce development workshop will be in person. We're oh. doing it locally in person in the project area. And so when you say project area, are you saying Burnham or are you saying Cadman City? Is everybody together are you going to do this all this well in the same situation we're going to work okay all right yeah we're going to work diligently to make sure that it's accessible for both communities mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what's really cool about this area is that you know we're part of chicago land mm -hmm. or southern suburb there are some really great really great development that's going on in your in your village yeah. and um you know even the whole way over to like hammond mm -hmm. like there so yeah, we, we can't just have an isolated, you know, looking at um, uh, opinions and, and feedback from, you know, specifically Calumet City. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be holistically regional um, and looking at different aspects of, of the community um, to get feedback. Yeah, one more question. How many of you actually tried to get on or get off of 94? <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many have you tried? I've tried. Yeah, I have okay. tried it. <laughs> so you know what it's like? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Absolutely. It's one of the things when you initially you come here, you learn that when you first get come around around that right there on State Street, it's a mess. So it's needed. I would say it's needed, but um, yeah, we would like to help you really part out with you as we get the community okay. feedback. That's what I'm more, more concerned about. Make sure the community gets the most heard. And uh, what you guys said, it goes with that. I like that. It's important for the community input because then that informs the alternatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, but how far would you have to go um, get south to, uh, to make it worth it? The hypothetical. I 94? Yeah. Yeah, we're envisioning going south to uh, Sibley. Okay. Yeah, so there there could be a potential for an auxiliary lane between the two interchanges, given the close proximity of the interchanges, that's something that would be evaluated. Okay. And if you think of any questions afterward, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Okay. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's leaving that we'll get it. Okay. <laughs> we'll continue with the uh, meeting at this time. We will hear uh, the mail report. Uh, 
We'll have a, a report from Clerk Chavez. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, manufacturing Bridge Program, a three-week program by Calumet Area Industrial Commission. Um, the, you need to register by March 25th, 2024. The program begins April 1st, 2024. It will be held at Pilgrim Baptist Church of South Chicago. Um, there's flyers here if anybody wants to pick them up in order to uh, apply or register for this three-week um, it's for manu manufacturing trade skills. Um, Trustee Garcia uh, works on this. And also, we have um, Chicago Southland booklets here for anyone to pick up if they'd like. It has like a variety of like where you can places to go for restaurants, hotels, or just a weekend things. And that's all I know. Okay, thank you, uh, Craig Luke, for your report and that information. Public education, health, safety, and welfare. And Trustee Greb's absence. Does anyone else have anything to, to report for that committee? Okay, thank you. Okay, so no report for that. Uh, public Works and Building, Trustee Clayton. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, public Works, they've been out um, picking up trash, collecting garbage, and disposing it. Um, off the ground, um, keeping the village um, looking nice. Also, uh, we co-patched 141st to 142nd in Green Bay for uh, potholes. And um, I wrote down that it looks good and uh, it rides good. Also, I um, have this pothole fact sheet from, from the American Public Works Association and um, it's a good read. It explains a lot about potholes and what causes them, how to fix them, and uh, how can we stop potholes from forming. You know, it's a good read. A lot of times when we talk public works talk, like coal patch, you know, it's in here. It's a definition you can read. I learned a lot on it. Also, at the end, I just wanted to read uh, <coughs> why are they called potholes. Pottery, make, pottery makers in the 15th and 16th century England would take advantage of the ruts that wagon and coach wheel, wheels gouged into roads. Anxious for a cheap source of raw materials for making clay pots, the potters would dig into the deep ruts to reach clay deposits underneath. Teamsters driving wagons and coaches over these reeds, over these roads, sorry, knew who and what caused these holes and referred to them as potholes. That's the history of potholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Trustee Clinton. Now he needs to figure out I don't know what to call it, the holes and the alleys. <laughs> <laughs> As it says here, the teamsters, right? I didn't know they were unionized. Yeah, that was a long time. I've been around a long time. <laughs> That's all I have. Yeah, so, um, if we have the potholes in the alley, we can't quite seem to get those under control. We fill them up and they come right back. So, but my only question is, and I ask the superintendent all the time, if you've got one part of the alley that's solid as concrete, and two feet later you've got a pothole that keeps coming back, what's the difference in the territory? It's the same thing, right? But we don't have a, we don't have a solution to that yet. Miss Scott, maybe you could help us with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Justin. Thank you, I mean, on the road. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, National Public Works Week is uh, May 19th through May 25th. Uh, National Public Works Week is May 19th through the 25th, 2024. Okay, thank you. I want to thank you for that report. Thank you for the information. Ordinance Resolution Planning and the Afternoon Trustee Garcia with Trustee Hunter. Discussion of uh, consideration of the taking action approved without from the ordinance 24, I mean 20, 20, 24-0-001, an ordinance amending Division 2 collection by Village of Article 2, collection and disposable in Article 3, landscape waste of Chapter 78, solid waste, Section 78-63, fees of the Code of Ordinance, Village of Burn, Illinois. So does the board have any questions? Yes. 
TV like mom, when you feel like mom, you feel cool. A motion to approve the ordinance 24, 2024-0001. Okay, so that was a motion on the floor by Trustee Hodges to approve. Okay. Um, and also in this, uh, I mean, which is not listed here in the ordinance per se, but there's a, a $5 uh, discount for the seniors that's tied to this. And so we, um, we try to offer the seniors, you know, something in addition, you know, since they all fixed income. And the mayor did not do that to benefit him, amen? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that the record show that. So, <laughs> all right. Remember, that came up once, and I offered a guy my sticker. He wouldn't take it, and later on, he tried to come back and get at the home. It's only once in a lifetime, you know. So, I proceed to the honor. So, uh, are you at this uh, motion? You make it more yeah. so We need a second, then. Second. And second by Trustee Richardson will probably take the role. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Mayor Paul? Yes. Uh, thank you. So that is it. Uh, Final House Trustee Kelps is out here. If you public, uh, you can also Trustee Richardson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just want to make sure you all know that your account numbers for your Commonwealth Edison bills will be changing. And, um, they should be coming through next month. I think I've seen something that said they sh our new account numbers will be uh, on our bill uh, coming up in March. So just so you can be aware, if the number changed, don't panic. <laughs> still got pay the bill. Yes, still got pay the bill. <laughs> still your bill. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> Uh, thank you, Trustee Richardson. Um, the Park and Recreation Trustee Hodges. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I want to thank everyone who came to the meeting last Thursday. Uh, the Forest Preserve, yeah. that was a really, really spirited meeting, and I really appreciate the people who came out. We really made a concerted effort just to get people out. And I thank you guys for coming out, letting your voice be heard, and I always say that. We're here to, um, to represent you, and you guys did a great job representing yourselves. So thank you for coming out. Um, we'll keep you updated, but again, that's the Forest Preserve. They was really elated to get your feedback. They took your feedback and they, they wrote it down and they're gonna take it to the commissioner and um, that's what they're gonna do it. Also, we've um, met with the good people over at the Time Memorial Park District. We got some really cool, exciting things coming up this summer. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on with that. Um, also, March 12th, March 30th, we have an, uh, I may, it may be a little early for me to, um, Announced this, but I'm really excited. We're doing Easter Head Hunt over there at Burnham Park at uh, 12 o'clock. We're going to do it a little later this year. It's going to be at 12 o'clock, so I invite all the kids um, Burnham to come back March 30th, 2024, at 12 o'clock. Also, the park, um, at the park district, Academy of Motor Park District, um, over there at the at, uh, Sandwich. The court is amazing. They just got finished remodeling it. It looks really good. Nice. It looks beautiful. In fact, they made it where you can have two courts in one. So I'm really excited for everybody to go over there and check it out. They're doing pickleball, and that's for the seniors, but um, they do that uh, 9, 9 a.m. to 10, 10 30 a.m. with Ashley. She's over, uh, she's actually gonna be over the court over there. So you guys, when you ask, she actually gave me her personal. She said, she, she don't mind, if anybody in Burnham have it. So you guys want Ashley number. You can let her know what's going on. She can come out and she can get you hooked up over there at the park district. But the court looks amazing, so you go ahead and check it out. And that's what we got going on this month. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Trustee Hodges, for that report and your information. Oh, one, one more thing. The Veterans Committee? Yeah, we talking about yeah, the Veterans Committee? Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about that? No, we can go ahead. I still have some flyers. Talk about the All right, so yeah, so, so Trustee Richardson, so we have a Veterans we create the first Burnham Veterans Committee. We're working together to put the, um, to put together our first Burnham Memorial. It's gonna be right there on, on the corner of Torrance, but we have to raise funds. So we're doing a brick fundraiser. So if you have a veteran in your life that you wanna honor, it's for a hundred dollars they get to get a brick on, on our uh, on our veteran memorial, it's gonna be there forever. We actually work in our ordinance to keep that long, keep that up as long as we can. So, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a veteran. It can be somebody in your life that you want to honor, that you can actually get that brochure. 
and you uh, you look at the back of it, and you can send the money. We're actually working in partnership with Ambex. And which lodge is the Ambex on there? That's uh, Ambex Post 43. Post 43. We're, so we're working in partnership with the lodge to do a better, to do a better than more. So you can see Trusty Richardson, and we'll have some more brochures in the front. But we are really, really proud of that because we really want to honor our veterans and we want to create a, something that we, everyone in Burnham will be proud to drive by and say your name is on that. So if you want to be a part of that, just see Trustee Richardson and um, there you go. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Trustee Hodges. And if anyone would like to make out a $100,000 check, do not make it out to the Village of Burnham, make it out to Post and Bad 43. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that's what, does anybody have anything else? Okay. Um, then a presentation of petitions. Then a communication, memorial, response. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, if they can remind me, uh, Trustee Garcia was one of our trustees here. She's not here this evening. Her father passed away this morning in Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, and what was his name? Ignacio Terrazas. Okay. See, I know I'm going to mess that up. <laughs> So we send her out of sympathy. So please lift our prayers for Trustee Garcia and her family on the loss of her father. Um, and we just do uh, some slight moments of silence for her also. All right, thank you. Then unfinished business. There's no new business. And uh, it's supposedly that a tornado is coming tonight or, or might be coming or alleged to be coming. So we just need to drive carefully and be aware and, and hide behind a tree if we need to. Don't give me that. the light, man. Okay, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the floor by Trustee Claybrook. Do we have a second? I second the motion. I second the motion. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee uh, Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Mayor Paul? Yes. My motion passed me to Jaren. I don't want you to come to.